Good morning, folks. We have a number of items to get to. There is no chance anything in this show outdoes DC today for the thing to remember, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun were pretty quiet. Small coronal hole just south of the equator, about the only relevant feature on our star. But here in geospace, things did get interesting due to the previous coronal hole. Before that, take a look in 211 angstroms at the full breadth of that coronal hole today. Really wants to be bigger, but is largely confined by the coronal particles and the fields. Now let's come back to Earth. You can see the geomagnetic hit in red and black up top in the solar wind telemetry. Blue flip, solar wind magnetic reversal as the yellow line beneath it, plasma density, began to spike upward. Afterwards, it's followed by a rise in purple and green, plasma speed and temperature. That's a coronal hole stream impact, the one we've been waiting for. While the KP index never got above 4, the geomagnetic deviation on the left, oof, that's a nice hit there. Luckily, a deflecting rather than coupling magnetic orientation. And folks, FYI, those CMEs some of you were worried about got sucked up and overtaken by the coronal hole stream. They were weak anyway. We did take a strong induction in western Canada down towards Vancouver. It was the strongest magnetic disturbance of the event and we did get an electrical explosion underground where we expect the currents to induce the strongest. Let's take a peek at something from yesterday's show up next. And by the way, the sublithospheric signals work well here on Earth too. Blood echo wind map showing the waning minor echoes across the northern ring of fire with stronger signatures in the south. Remember, this is just one of the three location forecasting measures at QuakeWatch.net. Top quake of the last day struck the Kermadec Islands in the South Pacific. Dead in the middle of that alert zone, it was well out to sea, luckily. Now let's go to some new missions. Folks, the Sphere X is one of the ones I was hoping they'd pick. With over a hundred shades of infrared, there's nowhere left for dust to hide. And the problems with cosmological expansion now have a sleuth on the case. Between this, LSST, and a few others, the entire plasma cosmology suite of future technology got the green light. Everything needed to debunk dark matter, and it doesn't seem like the mainstream scientists have figured that out. On the solar side, They've picked two new missions, and one of them was actually my least favorite of the choices, but the other is aimed sneakily at solar climate forcing, and was my favorite. We've been monitoring the move to not just identify and correlate the currents in the sky, but quantify and insert into climate models. Here is the last piece of the solar to electric current technologies needed to turn a keyhole into an open floodgate. Up next, an interesting precursor event tells a bit of a timeline for quiescence to major outburst on a star. Even in a small dwarf nova, the anomalies begin weeks, months, to years ahead of time. And folks, another nova to discuss, but the normally small X-ray burst type 1 events from pulsars that normally don't have shock waves that could even reach Mercury, well, that's not what they are talking about here. This was not a small pulsar burst. Luckily, this was very far away and its polar jets not pointed at Earth. We greatly appreciate your support, no matter what happens in the battle today of cheating lies and evil versus justice and freedom. Subscribe, because we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.